one of the reasons why we put containerized applications on Kubernetes is to ensure that an application is resilient. By resilient, we mean that application should be able to self-recover. For example, if something happens to an application like a bug or an attack or something happens to an infrastructure, then application should be able to self-heal or self-recover. Now, it depends on our organization's policies or application requirement or the criticality of the application, how long or how much we want the application to be resilient. And we can measure resiliency of an application on the basis of two metrics. One is called as RTO and the other one is RPO. RTO or recovery time objective means that how long or how much time does it take for an application to recover from a failure? Whereas RPO or a recovery point objective means the maximum window of time in which data might be lost after an incident. So for example, if it takes like five minutes for your application to become responsive again, that is five minutes of RTO. If you have lost like 10 minutes or 15 minutes of data due to that failure, then your RPO is that much in very simple words. Anyway, so how do you measure or how do you ensure that your application has an acceptable RTO and RPO? Or in other words, how do you ensure that your application is resilient or not? AWS has launched a service called as AWS Resilience Hub a couple of years back. And recently they have added a feature or support for EKS based application in that Resilience Hub. The sole purpose of AWS Resilience Hub is that it provides a central place to help organizations define, validate, and track the resilience of AWS native applications by analyzing the services that make up that application. So now AWS Resilience Hub also can analyze your EKS cluster and the applications on it. And for now, it just analyzes the pods, deployments, and replica sets, and it, then it tells you whether they are resilient or not. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate or how you can enable or configure AWS EKS cluster with AWS Resilience Hub. I already have an EKS cluster running and with few namespaces, and I'll quickly show you. So this is my AWS EKS cluster. Most of it is running on Fargate, but that doesn't matter. If I go and check the namespaces, these are few of my namespaces. And let's also check a few of my pods if they're running fine. So most of them are running fine, which is good. Let's clear my screen. So my EKS cluster is there. Now we need to integrate it with AWS Resilience Hub. In order to do that, we first need to create an IAM role, and then we need to configure a few of the cluster policies. And I will be putting all of these steps and code in my GitHub repo or on my blog, and I will share the link in the video's description, so don't worry about the code. Let's first create the role which is needed for AWS Resilience Hub to talk with EKS. And this role has a specific name, which is called as AWS Resilience Sub Assessment EKS Access Role. I know it's a mouthful, but again, I will be putting all of the commands in the, um, on my uh, block. Let me first run this, create this role. So first of all, I'm in this command, I'm saving my account ID in this variable, then policy, variable contains this policy, which is assuming the role which we are going to create with the root users, which allows it to test almost everything. So policy is done, which is I am policy. Now I'm going to create the role here. So as you can see on this line, role name AWS Resilience. This is the name we should be using, which is used by AWS Resilience Hub. And this policy variable contains the policy which we defined above. So I'm running it, so it should be able to create this role, which is good. So the role has been created. Let me clear the screen. Now, once the role is done, we need to create a cluster role and a role binding or cluster role binding in our EKS cluster. 
what it does is once we create this role, the cluster role and role binding, AWS resilience sub read access across all namespaces is done because you need to give your uh, resilience sub cluster level access. So that is the purpose of this cluster role and cluster role binding. Again, these are few of the cluster roles and stuff which I'm creating. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff there and I'll quickly walk you through. Let me quickly first create it so that uh, that will be happening in the background and let me show you what exactly this is doing. So all I'm doing is I'm creating an IAM role which is bound to this cluster role and um, it, it has various a resource uh, verbs and resources like pod, replica, set, and nodes, and then so on and so so forth. Usual API groups and resources, and then I am binding this cluster role with that role which we created earlier. So as you can see, that is done, and also the binding is also done here on these lines. So far, so good. Now, once that's done, we need to create a mapping between the I am role which we created in the first step the AWS Resilience Hub Assessment EK zone with this Kubernetes role, which we just created. And I'm using the familiar EKSTTL command to do that. So all it is doing here is it is creating this mapping between my um, EK success role plus my Resilience Hub. So it is giving me 404 error because I think it uh, okay. So my I'm I need to use the proper cluster name because in this one I'm not using the cl uh, correct cluster name. Let me grab my cluster name and I will replace it in this command. So this is my cluster name which I'm using. Okay, it is still unable to find my cluster role. Let me quickly grab my cluster name from um, from the console and I will uh, rewrite this command. Okay, so I have found, not only found the cluster name, but also the error. So the command which I had pasted here was using the region US East 2, whereas my cluster was in city region AP South East 2, which I replaced here. And then it was able to Create this mapping. So all good at this point in time. Let's move forward. Now, once this is done, we need to um, go into AWS console and then configure AWS Resilience Hub. So let's do that. I'm shifting now to AWS console. Okay, now I'm in AWS console on AWS Resilience Hub service. Click on add application here, and then give this application any name. I'll just call it my EKS app. For testing resiliency. And then I'm just going to do EKS only for now because the whole application is on, on EKS. I don't have any other Terraform state file or any other cloud formation stack, so it is fine. Then Keep scrolling down, select your EKS cluster, mine is this, cross plane SSP, which is good. And then once this is done, you need to select your namespace. So if I go back to my cluster and check my namespaces, I'm going to clear it. And you'll get namespaces. And this, I will just select any one of them. Maybe I will go with Valero, which is another tool for backup and restore in Kubernetes. So I'm just selecting the Valero here. Go back to your AWS console and then update name, click on update namespace, add new namespace and Valero. Add here, remove this and then save. So namespace added, this error is gone. Another feature in AWS Resilience service that you can do your periodic um, daily assessments, which which is cool if you want to keep your assessment up to date, but I'm not going to do it for now. Click on next. 
now it is saying that it is imported successfully now it is loading the resources and it takes a bit of a time because what it does is it go, goes into these resources and come here now it has come here so i can see that it has loaded the value here and this is important for now it only supports deployment replica sets and pods and there is a, a plan for for AWS to add more resources but now it only does these three things in Kubernetes, which is okay. Click on next. So we don't have any resilience policy. We can even set that because we need to publish our application in um, uh, in AWS resilience app. So let's create a resilience policy. Click here. It will take to another screen. Okay, just give us uh, okay, so you have two options. You can either tailor your application uh, policy as per your business needs, or you can uh, go with some some of the AWS provided ones. So, and there are a lot of them. For example, uh, we could say that okay, I'm going my EKS app policy, and then you can go with the non-critical application by disruption type, and then. If you want to learn more, you can see this, that for the for this type of non-critical application, RTO recovery time objective is two days, whereas recovery point objective as how much data you can lose is one day. And then uh, it also tells you about what infrastructure availability zone and region configuration should be like. Okay, cool. So let's get this one and see what it does. Um, and then, you can also see there are a lot of other foundational core services, critical application, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to create it. It is done. Select here. You can select your policy. Click on next. Now, just review quickly where it is there. We have not enabled daily assessment, which is fine. And then some of the uh, failover uh, things which it will be suggesting on the basis of policy. It is showing you resources, my resilience policy, and the RTO RPO associated with that, and in terms of customer application view, and also from the AWS infrastructure view, and then click on publish. Now it is publishing my stuff there. Now once this is done, as you can see the application has been published. You can see more details here, which we just did. Now, second step is to assess the resiliency, which basically what it does is, it runs an assessment on the basis of the policy you selected on the infrastructure, which we just have published in Resilience Hub, and then gives you a report. So click on Assess Resiliency, just select the default report name, click Run here. And then it takes a bit of a time to run. So I will pause the video here while it runs and then I will resume it. Okay, assessment report has been generated and it is in the resiliency assessment section. Click on the report. And now in this, it will show you the results and then recommendations and also the operational recommendations. Let's go through them one by one. In this one, as you can see that you have RTO and then RPO in the same page where you can see if it is green, it means it is it is um, in sync and within our RTO and RPO. So the it nothing is being breached for now. If you go to resiliency recommendations, it is giving you a lot of recommendation and also telling you whether it meets the SLA or it doesn't meet the SLA. For now, it is telling us that it is meeting it, which is great. And then it is also suggesting you to make it better. And this report is primarily broken down in three sections like results, resiliency recommendation, and operational recommendation, which we just saw. So in the resiliency recommendation, you can see that um, it is giving you a lot of things around your um, application side of things, which means that you can configure liveliness probes and then you can also configure multiple AZs, and also it gives you lots and lots of best practices from Kubernetes. Um, and I also noticed that it also gives you some of the costing, 
feedback if you implement these recommendations. So I haven't tested it, verified them, but looks good. Okay, and then there are also application targeted current RDUs and RPUs, which it meets, which is nice. Okay, go on the top. Now, all in all, it both of these meet as shown in this report. Now check the operational recommendations. Okay, so operational recommendations, it is unable to figure it out because uh, it hasn't run it as per our uh, endpoint configuration because I haven't enabled the rules which you can do if you want, and you can also do some of the canary uh, setup if you want to test out your operational recommendations like failover to another region and so on and so forth. But in this one, I'm just only using one region. Okay, so this is what it gives you to, uh, in terms of reporting. Now, another cool thing which you can do with it is if you remember what we did, we simply did it with the non-critical RTO and RPO. For example, if you want, uh, uh, for example, just suppose that this application is still in non-prod and you have tested it with a non-prod configuration. Now you want to promote it to the production. But before you do that, you need to test in resilience up if your application is production ready or not. For that, you can create another new res uh, resiliency assessment, go to run, and then maybe click on it and then from there you can just configure um, once it's sorry once it's done you can go and configure it as per your criticality and uh, your production assessment so there are a lot of things which you can do with this you can set up alarms here you can set up your own standard operating procedure you can even do fis which stands for fault injection experiments um, I, I have found out in many experiments that it is still evolving, but it looks really promising. And then last but not least, you can configure your application as per your own configuration parameters. And if you want to update it, you can select it and update it from here. All in all, the inclusion of AWS EKS in AWS Resiliency Hub is really a welcome setup because configuring and going through the resiliency of microservices application is really hard. So if we can figure out the resiliency RTO RPO of an application before moving it to the production is really useful. I hope you like this video. If you have any comments or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you very much.